Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn about cutouts. We can initially access cutouts by going to the Tools dropdown, mousing over Measure, and here they are grouped up together. We have the polygonal one and ellipse cutouts. Now, I believe that we can also access them right here in our measuring panel. Let's make sure. No, so cutouts are not here, just the actual regular measuring tools, because cutouts are not really a markup. They basically can change the properties of a markup and allow us to modify it. So I'm going to zoom in on these areas right here. I'm also going to make a brand new area that we're going to be using to demonstrate today. So you can do this with basically areas and volumes and most of the measuring tools up here that basically are not just lines. So the length tool won't really work with this, of course. So let's try it with area. I'm going to create that now, a nice large area so that we can see what it's like to cut into it. So sometimes people are basically trying to determine what it's going to cost, for example, to paint a wall, but they don't really want to paint the windows on the wall. So the cutouts are going to be made in order to subtract the windows from the wall itself. So that's one example of where this is very, very useful. So now I have my shortcut for the cutouts right here and here. They're basically the second to last tools right next to dynamic fill and next to the count tool right here. So I'm going to use the polygonal one first, and we're going to see how it works. So I can actually swap between either cutout here. Now my specialty toolbar that changes based on the markup that I have selected has now changed. So I can change between them right here or here. So when I'm not, not moused over a particular markup that works well with cutouts, you'll see that my cursor shows basically a disabled symbol. So it basically has that little circle with the slash going through it. And as soon as I go over an area, it changes to the plus sign and the area highlights itself in blue in the background. So I can do it with these areas. I cannot do it in these circles, as we can see here. Text boxes with backgrounds don't really work, but here is another area that works, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a few markups that allow us to do this. The cloud tool does not allow us to do it either, or cloud plus. And so let's go into this measurement and let's make a cutout. Let's note all the data here and see how it changes. So we'll keep in mind that the area here is about 1,730 square feet and the volume is 865 cubic feet. So now I'm going to make a cutout inside of this. So there's a few ways to do it. I can click and hold my left mouse button and make a rectangular one just like that. And there it is. Now all the data has changed because I've subtracted it. And now as I move my mouse with the cutout tool still selected inside of the cutout itself, I basically can't really do anything. But the area still exists, and now we can see the cutout once the area itself is highlighted. Now, instead of holding the left mouse button down, I'm just going to click and let go, and now I can make a cutout of any shape that basically is any polygon shape. So we're going to use the ellipse one a little bit later. When I'm done with it, let's actually press Enter and see what happens. It automatically joins the first point and the last point of our cutout together. So it must be a fully enclosed polygon for this to work. Once we're done, we're just going to press the Escape key. And now we can see how this works. So if I select any portion of the cutout, it's essentially part of the area. So I'm going to go into Properties. And we're going to see that the area itself does not have any settings for the cutout. The cutout essentially just modifies the area itself. So this is wonderful. And we can see the grips here. So if we need to modify the cutout further after placing it, then we can basically just drag these grips around and adjust it further. And all the data for the area is also adjusting as we adjust this to make it larger or smaller, for example. So obviously larger cutouts mean that our area is now reducing in size and so on and so forth if we do it the opposite. Now we're increasing the size of our area. And so that's how the polygonal cutout works. Let's now look at the ellipse cutout. Before we use the elliptical cutout, I'd like to pose a question. How do we get rid of these cutouts? Because right now, if the cutout is part of the area tool, and it's not a separate entity that has its own settings. It's a little bit strange when we think about how we can get rid of these. Luckily, all we have to do is right click on any edge of a cutout and the option to delete cutout is now available to us. So we can just click it and the cutout's gone. Let's use this space to create an elliptical one. So I'm gonna go and select it right up here. And just like we did with the polygonal one, we have two options. We can click and hold with the left mouse button. This allows us to make either an ellipse or, of course, we can hold the shift key and make a perfect circle. The same applies to the polygonal tool. We can make perfect squares by holding down the shift key while doing this. So I'm just going to make an ellipse in a regular one, just like that. And there it is. Now, 
let me get rid of this one. So I'm going to right click on top of it. Actually, I think I'll get rid of the polygonal one. So I'll right click on this one and delete it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it one more time. And this time I'm just going to click and let go. And you can see that it actually doesn't make a difference. <laughs> so what happens basically is because it's an ellipse and you can't really choose different points, the ellipse must have these four points that are basically in relation to one another. What is nice though is after placing this ellipse, this uniform ellipse that basically has similar lengths and widths basically on both sides, we can then press the escape key and then select it again. We can now use these grips to adjust it any way we want. So now I can start to make some very funky curves. So as you can see, I can just adjust these and move it any which way that I need to in order to make, for example, some kind of an odd looking pool. <laughs> so that's basically how we can use the ellipse cutout. It's very similar to the polygonal one, but it does not have the option for us to basically just pick points and put it anywhere we want to because ellipses are very different shapes than the polygons themselves. And that's essentially how we can create cutouts. Thanks very much for watching our tutorial on cutouts in Bluebeam Review. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.